On October 29, 1969, computers at Stanford and UCLA connected for the first time creating the ARPANET. They were the first host on what would one day become the Internet. The ARPANET network was established between Harvard, MIT, and BBN in 1970. Ray Tomlinson developed email in 1971, and Michael Hart came to the realization that future of computers was in storage, retrieval, and searching of information. He launched the Project Guttenberg to make information contained in books available in electronic form, which was the birth of the e-book. ARPANET made its first transatlantic connection in 1973 with the University College of London. In 1974, a proposal was made to link ARPA-like networks together into an inter-network that would work around the transmission control protocol, which eventually became TCP/IP. On January 1, 1983, ARPANET computers were all switched over to TCP/IP protocol. The protocol wars began in 1986 between European countries pursuing the open systems interconnection and the United States using the Internet ARPANET protocol. In 1988, the first major internet worms were released. Internet relay chat was also first deployed in 1988, paving the way for real-time chat. The proposal for the World Wide Web was brought about in 1989. In 1991, the first search protocol that examined file contents instead of just file names was launched. MP3 file format became a standard for sharing songs via the internet, and the first webcam was deployed at Cambridge University. In 1995, the first online purchase was made at Echo Bay, which later became eBay. The first story to be broken online instead of traditional media was the Bill Clinton Monica Lewinsky scandal in 1998, which was posted on the Drudge Report after Newsweek killed the story. Mobile web became popular in 2007, and the first internet election took place in 2008 with the U.S. presidential election. What is called the digital divide, broadband connectivity in rural America is sporadic, prohibitively expensive, or non-existent. Those of us living in and around metropolitan areas have a choice of provider services ranging from cable modem, telephone line DSL, fiber optic cable, WiMAX, fixed wireless, satellite, and broadband over existing power lines. A study done by the Pew Internet and American Life Project indicated that while broadband adoption is growing in urban, suburban, and rural areas, Broadband users make up larger percentages of urban and suburban users than rural users. Pew found that the percentage of all U.S. adults with in-home broadband is 52% for urban areas, 49% for suburban areas, and 31% for rural areas. For service providers, deploying equipment is costly, making the return on investment low due to the population density. As pointed out in the same study, the greater the geographical distances among customers, the larger the cost to serve those customers. There is often less incentive for companies to invest in broadband in rural areas than, for example, in urban areas where there is more demand, more customers with perhaps higher incomes, and less cost to wire the market area. Having multiple choices creates competition, which keeps the price of connectivity within reach. As pointed out in the U.S. government's national broadband plan, in general, broadband subscribers appear to have benefited from the presence of multiple providers. Broadband providers have invested in network upgrades to deliver faster broadband speeds and enter new product markets. Cable companies providing telephony and telephone companies offering multi-channel video. The price of connectivity in rural areas runs higher than its urban counterpart. For example, a DSL plan for a user in Tox, Alaska topped in at 512K up and down with a 10 gigabyte monthly bandwidth allowance for about $180 a month with a $50 charge for the Wi-Fi modem. Alternately, the satellite plan starts at $700 for the dish and $180 a month for speeds of up to one and a quarter megabytes up and down. Similar infrastructure costs are associated with WiMAC deployment, which some see as an alternative to Wi-Fi for rural areas. In a recent study by Network World describing the potential issues surrounding WiMAC's deployment, the terrain is very mountainous. It has tons of trees. It's not a cookie cutter infrastructure by any means, and building it in that environment will be the most challenging aspect we deal with. The benefits of connecting more of our rural citizens would be huge. Consumerism, distance learning, and e-commerce for agriculture could bolster a sagging local economy. According to estimates, by relying on wireless broadband and therefore providing 100% of coverage, 116,862 jobs can be created or saved between 2011 and 2014. 
while on average, the median income per county in these states could be increased by $1,201. Consider how farmers and agriculturalists could benefit from real-time trading information regarding commodities, B2B, and B2C marketing. Additionally, law enforcement, schools, libraries, hospitals, and emergency services can all benefit from a stable, cost-effective, and robust broadband connectivity. Four G LTE technology not only impacts rural America, but also businesses across the U.S. Companies that otherwise would not have opportunities due to connectivity issues will now have a competitive edge in a fierce global marketplace. Improving quality will increase the ability to communicate and transact, which translate into increased productivity a major contributor to growth in gross domestic products. The U.S. investment between 2012 and 2016 in 4G LTE networks could account for $73 billion to $151 billion in GDP growth and 331,000 to 771,000 jobs. 58% of small businesses currently use DSL and only 28% of buildings with more than 20 employees are served by fiber. The use of 4G LTE mobile broadband could be an option due to its enhanced anywhere, anytime benefits. Small businesses using 4G LTE networks can now save on office space and hardware when they reside their application and storage in the cloud. This is possible only because of a reliable and secure connectivity of the 4G LTE network. With 4G LTE network, companies can use virtual business meetings and get an experience that looks like you are there in person. The high quality video in 4G LTE network creates the opportunity for an anywhere, anytime high quality interaction. Employees are no longer tied down to their desks. They will be able to be as productive when they are out of the office as when they are in. Transferring large amounts of data between corporate servers and remote end users will no longer be a painful experience thanks to the 4G LTE network. With the advent of cellular technology and the need for internet access everywhere, one company above all others has made significant progress in providing a solution to the digital divide and opened the broadband industry up to competition. This company is Light Squared. With its integrated LTE satellite network and 4G partner Sprint, Light Squared is able to offer wholesale internet backhauls to foster affordable internet connectivity for local internet service providers once more to build out and be competitive. With local monopolies like telephone and cable companies for broadband access, in some areas not at all, the push for higher speeds at lower prices has not been possible until now. By utilizing terrestrial and satellite links, there's no area in North America that will be void of connectivity. By reducing the backhaul costs of internet connectivity, local municipalities including hospitals, emergency services, and schools will have more reliable, more affordable, and faster connectivity speeds. Traditionally, telecom companies build out fiber infrastructure to local point of presence or central offices. Then, local cell carriers lease expensive lines for internet access known as the backhaul. By utilizing LTE-based infrastructure for a backhaul, local cell carriers and internet service providers can invest in less expensive subscriber-based units and is not confound to physical build-out locations in company-specific zones. Light Squared has partnered with companies ranging from chipset manufacturers to auto industry and in knowing that the future of all devices, including cars, will be connected. With more and more services like telephony, cable, and movie streaming becoming IP-based, Network traffic across all the internet has increased eightfold over the past year, 
and will increase fourfold over the next five years. Overall, IP traffic will grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 32% from 2010 to 2015. Building on the shoulders of early ARPANET engineers and addressing availability and cost concerns, wireless connectivity throughout the country with LightSquared's network technology and expertise will soon will all be connected.